everyone, how's it going? Pixel saying in today's video, I'm giving you my best Brock build on Evil Dead the game. So I've spent a lot of time playing Brock since he's come out from Wednesday. And, you know, there was a lot of different routes I wanted to go with this guy. You know, I wanted to try out Master Influence. I wanted to try out a quick cooldown, his ability, you know, running fast forward, the normal leader type of stuff that we would normally run. But because of the way this guy's built and his aura buffs aren't like massive amounts of percentage like compared to other leaders unless you have certain characters on your team i felt like master of influence doesn't really work that well on him so i designed this build to kind of work well for himself and for the team as well um you know he's got different pink fuck upgrades as well which is you know it's just slightly different from other leaders too so um you know if you look through his kit Obviously, he has uh, his active ability, which is all eyes on me. It has a 10-second duration, a 4-meter aura range increase as well, which is nice, and it has a 45% aura effect. So you can't argue that Master Influence will work well on this. Um, however, I, because you don't use his ability that often, I don't think it's worth really putting, you know, four points into Master Influence because I feel like you're not going to really get much benefit out of that because, you know, life of the party only gives you an extra 10% per certain class on your team so you know if you have like you know mo most cases you will have like one of each so again you're not really going to go higher than a 10 percent uh on most on most situations in most team comps you're not going to go higher than 10 percent on the aura buff um of course again the blood tie stuff if there's more family members from the ash or the uh, the williams family members sorry um you will get a damage reduction which is only a seven percent damage reduction and again master of influence just say you had like you know three ashes on your team of course you're going to get like 21 percent there again if you had master of influence you're only really going to go by you know just say about 4.2 percent on that or something it's not going to be anything massive um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's it's worth really going for Master Influence. And obviously, I am the manager, which is a nice little one where it's kind of like a little deep pocket skill for him where he can carry extra amulets, shemps, uh, matchsticks, and ammo, of course. Okay, so factoring all, all of his skills, this is the this is the build I have been running, and this is the build I've had a lot of success with so far. So uh, we're just going to put two points into Great Influence. Um, I don't like to go three points. You know, I don't think 12.5 meters, you know, a 2.5 meter gain from the second one is not really worth it. Um, later on down prestige, obviously you could argue that you will buff it up to 15 meters, but you know, most leaders, if you're experienced, you will stick with your teammates in anyways. I don't really think that you need to go any higher than 10 meters right now, unless you have a character prestige. I'm just going to put one point into cardio and uh, we're going to put two points in the artful dodger so you know with other leaders you will put two points in the heat to get four dodges and uh, with this guy you have to put two points in the heat to get three dodges because he only has two pink fuck upgrades on on his stamina so uh if you don't have the the two points in here you're only going to get two dodges and it's not going to work well so um be sure that when you make a build on this guy you always put two and two in awful dodger um we're going to put one point in industrial strength you know, I I do like to max this out usually on leaders. However, I don't feel like it's necessary on this guy. Um, I haven't really died much with him at all. Uh, so I don't really think industrial strength matters that much. Um, obviously, with other leaders, I like to kind of buff this up a little bit. And, you know, since I've been surviving with one out of three on industrial strength, I'm actually thinking about going back to my other builds and my other leaders and maybe taking a couple of points out of here and moving them around somewhere else because, you know, I don't really think it's that necessary to go for an extra 10% of health, if I'm honest. Um, so then we're going to come up here. We're going to put one point in the arcane knowledge. And then we're going to put two points in a quicker cooldown. So I think with his ability, he's got a roughly around an 80 second cooldown. I haven't actually paid attention to it too much. But with quicker cooldown, it actually drops it down a little bit. Um, so we can actually use his ability a lot more frequently. And his ability is very good. Obviously, given a 45% um, aura effect buff. Meaning, you know, he's going to do a lot more damage. And your teammates are going to do a lot more damage. And of course, you know, he doesn't get interrupted during his attacks. Which I think is a very, very huge one there. Um, I and mean, we're going to put two points in a deep pockets ammo. So, you know, probably thinking what you're doing that for. Um, of course, if you play with a hunter, this can work out great as well. So, uh, with this guy, he's a bit of a pack rat for the team. And I've really wanted a character like this for a while. You know, someone who can hoard a lot of ammo and a lot of shems. And the, the, the weird thing is with this guy and Cheryl combined, obviously, they're going to get some nice aura effect buffs. And not only that, but... Between the both of them, they're going to carry 13 Shems Callers, which is pretty crazy. So then, um, if you have Deep Pockets Ammo, I think the maximum, like, handgun ammo you can carry is, like, 80. 
you can actually carry more ammo than a hunter as well uh, if you have deep pockets ammo there so you can carry like up to 60 rounds of long gun ammo as well and special weapon ammo which is just totally crazy and i think it works really well honestly um there was times yesterday when i was playing them throughout my entire stream where i was like is this really necessary you know i'm not really seeing much benefit from this but when i did start playing with a hunter and i was able to throw out a lot of ammo for them i thought it worked out really well so um again you know when you when you're watching my build videos and you're listening to me go through a few things and explaining why i'm choosing things you've got to understand that i've got certain play styles different to what you might have as well so um if you don't think deep pockets ammo is worth it you can of course just move that around to something else always use my guides or my builds as like a baseline to making your own build as well this isn't like a definitive build this is something that you could probably replicate and do well with Although you can expand upon it for your own set of play style as well. So, okay, so we're going to come down here. We're going to put three points into C and stars. We're going to max out devastating force. And then we're going to max out last word. So I'm not actually a huge fan of last word. Um, I never really run this on most of my characters on the game. However, because of his ability, I thought, thought it works really good. You know, he can't be interrupted during attack. So you definitely have, you know, a, a massive opportunity here to get the final hit damage there. Depending on, it doesn't even matter what weapon you're using as well. You know, you can use a baseball bat, which I have been running on this guy. You know, a pipe. The pipe is a great weapon, by the way. I've been using that quite a lot. And of course, using the lumberjack axe and all that usual, the usual meta weapons. I thought worked really well with uh, last word on this guy as well. You know, I've been hitting some really good damage numbers uh, throughout the entire game with this guy. You know, I've been ending games, you know, with 41,000 plus damage, which I think is pretty good for a leader, to be honest. And, um, you know, like I said, I haven't really been struggling too much with, you know, taking loads of damage. Or I haven't been going down a lot with this guy, especially since you have like three dodges combined with his ability as well. Uh, like I said, his ability is a bit different to Henry the Reds, where... You know, Henry is obviously invulnerable, but you can use his ability to obviously get revives and to get resurrections too. Um, of course, he can still take damage during that, but he also buffs up the team. Bear that in mind. A lot of times, uh, I've actually forgotten that his aura, actually, um, when you activate his ability, his aura actually gets a buff as well, um, which I thought it works really well for the character. So we're going to come up here. We're going to go to stop and power just one point, and then we're going to put three points into hollow points. So... Uh, that that is my build that i have been running on this guy and i've been having a lot of fun doing that just swapping between you know doing melee combat and then range combat really fast i think it's worked really well so far with this dude and you know just having that little bit of extra range damage has helped out greatly against possessions and boss units and obviously with the way his ping fuck is spec you can obviously buff up your range a lot more in the upgrades as well you can have the faster reloads and whatnot and again the same with his melee combat obviously he can have the faster attack speed what warriors get which again is going to help with last word and like combined with his ability it works out really good so uh, i'm just going to explain how i spent the ping fuck on this guy so um of course we go for stamina straight away you want to get the two points in stamina and then what i do is i go straight for melee damage just being me that's my type of play style i like to go for melee damage straight away after that getting those faster attacks is definitely helpful on this dude especially for like spamming finishes and stuff and then from melee i go to ranged so then i can buff up my ranged attacks too and then I get the faster reload on top of that with a combined vault of ammo that i've collected throughout the process of getting the pink folk upgrades and then we're going to come down to like fear or health. You know, it's entirely up to you what route you want to go. So against the ball, I like to actually buff up my fear because obviously ball can increase your fear level quite a bit. Um, so buffing up your fear level in the pink fuck upgrades definitely helps against ball. Um, for other demons, however, you might be more inclined to go for the health route. But it's entirely up to you if you want to do that. And then obviously we go for shield last because I don't think shield's too important on this guide. But don't forget you can carry five extra amulets. Um, sorry, you can carry an extra two amulets so you can have five in total, which does work out well. Um, occasionally, I'll probably use an amulet for myself. However, I primarily drop those for warriors on my team as well. So you know with my build videos, sometimes I will suggest what weapons to look out for on these characters. However, with him... You can pretty much use anything because of his ability. You will get interrupted during attacks. And what I will say is, you know, stick to what you know best. Obviously, a lumberjack axe works great. Uh, a pipe, like I said, I've been using a baseball bat, getting some pretty good damage. Um, the baseball bat is still not the greatest weapon. Uh, you know, you can use a shovel, a sledgehammer, anything like that, I think works really well on this guy. And even some three-speed weapons too. Um, however... I feel like since he can't be interrupted using his ability, you can, you know, sort of bring the lesser weapons or melee weapons up a little bit. 
um and you can get benefits from using those as well and as for range you know just sticking with like you know the smg works really good on this guy i've used the smg quite a lot because he can hold a lot of ammo for it um so using the smg uh long any long gun weapon again works out great yeah honestly i think you can run any weapon with this build and it works out great with this guy um i just probably wouldn't use like something like a meat cleaver or something like that just stick to what you know best and what weapons you know best like swords etc and you'll do really well with this build and, and you know i have been running this build all day yesterday and i won almost every single game i didn't win every game i lost a couple of games you know playing with randoms and stuff that always factors into that um but when i was running this and i just i just felt i wouldn't say unstoppable but i just felt like i had such a high damage output that the demon wasn't much of a threat to me as well as having the three dodges you know not getting interrupted during my attacks is a huge thing but you've got to be wary of that when you're not getting interrupted you've got to be watching your health bar quite a lot because um you know you won't be interrupted during attacks however your health bar will be taking quite a bit of damage um, so just be wary that when you are going for the heavy attacks with this guy as well. Um, but yeah, this has been my best Brock build uh, for Evil Dead the game. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you have fun using this build. Like I said, I ran this build for an entire stream and I thought it was fantastic. And hopefully you guys find it fantastic as well. And you know, later on down the line when we get in prestige and we've got some extra points to spend... I'm starting to think, you know, stuff like Tougher Than Hell could work really well on this dude to combine with his ability as well. Um, it's just a shame that the leader skill tree totally sucks ass and um, that you've got to go through like three fear perks basically to get to that. Um, what I would have liked to see in the leader skill tree is to have like an extra point after improved amulet. So we had an extra skill underneath fear no evil and then we could have had like a little tangent that took us into tougher than hell i thought that would have worked great but sadly we don't and you know like i said maybe it's later on down the line with extra prestige points we could look at doing something like tougher than hell but anyways thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you like the build hopefully you like the video leave me a like hit that sub button for more evil dead content leave me a comment down below let me know what you guys think of the build as well and i have been pixels awesome viewers i'll catch you guys in the next one